Hello and welcome to part one of the STM32 MP157 SSK Quick Start Guide Walkthrough. My name is Rob Meyer. I'm an engineer with Aero Electronics, and I'm going to be helping you through um, the Quick Start Guide for the Avenger 96, that is the STM32 MP157 kit. And we're going to be starting today um, in section 2.3 of the Quick Start Guide that you can find on Aero.com um, or on the GitHub for this particular product. So starting in section 2.3, um, we're assuming that you have your board uh, up and running with a good image and it's connected to your local Wi-Fi. Um, you have a terminal program of some kind connected to your board. You have a file transfer protocol system of some kind connected to your board. I'm using WinSCP in this case. I'm using PuTTY for my terminal. And we also need to have a security starter kit cloud connect instance running on your AWS account. So if you need uh, instructions on how to create the Cloud Connect instance, you'll find that in the Security Starter Kit Cloud Connect Quick Start Guide, which you can find on the same Arrow.com product page um, or in the Arrow GitHub. And we have videos to accompany that Quick Start Guide as well. As far as the tools that you need to set up and connect to the board, um, I am using a Windows 10 build environment for this particular demo, so I'm using the tools that are recommended in the Quick Start Guide for a Windows user environment um, to run through these steps. There are options for Linux users as well. The steps and the tools may look a little bit different uh, between Linux and the Windows operating system, obviously, but um, the nuts and bolts, the concepts that we're going to be working through today will all be the same and should translate rather easily. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be starting in, uh, as I mentioned earlier, section 2.3, step 2, um, which will walk us through how to generate and register a root certificate for our device. So we need to log in to our Cloud Connect instance, and we're going to go to Settings. And we need to copy our registration code. And I'm going to paste it into this notepad that I have open. Um, I like to have a notepad running when I'm working through these types of demos um, or guides so that I can uh, keep track of the commands that I need to use. I can copy and paste these commands out. I can record um, strings, commands, or codes that I know I'm going to need multiple times so I don't have to go back and retrieve them um, from, you know, in this case it would be Cloud Connect, but it might be in um, the guide that you're following or another resource. Um, and for these inline commands, these terminal commands specifically, I recommend copying and pasting these from the PDF or document that you're referencing into something, some kind of text editor before pasting them then into your terminal. Um, I found in practice that many times if there is a line break in the document that you're copying the command out of, um, many times when you go to then paste it directly into your terminal, what will happen is the terminal will, int will interpret that line break as a new line entry, um, which translates essentially to you hitting the enter key. So for instance, this is a single command string, but it has a line break here. And the original document that line break, if you had copied this line and pasted it directly into your terminal, would have tried to execute this part of the string, and then after executing, would queue up this part of the string as your next command string, which obviously is not what you are trying to achieve. So by copying that command and pasting it into a text editor, we can verify 
that even though this line is broken, there's not a new line or return line character that's hidden here. This is simply a word wrap or a uh, line wrap break. Very important. So I suggest using some kind of tool. Again, you don't necessarily need to use Notepad. Any kind of text editor should work just fine. Just figured I would uh, take the time to give you a, a quick tip, something to watch out for, not just for this particular uh, process, but any process where you're copying and pasting um, large amounts of data or you have several keys that you have to reference or commands that you need to uh, edit or copy and paste over to a terminal. Um, I find this very helpful. I have also um, run through the first set of commands in section 2.3, step 2, part B, um, where we're going to be generating our verification certificate. So I've run all the commands up to the generate certificate.sh. So what you'll see when you walk through these first couple commands, um, first of all, generating your key and then clearing your TPM. Um, the purpose of this step is really precautionary just to make sure that you don't have any leftover artifacts from a previous attempt of this build um, or leftover in the build itself. So you know you're working with a clean TPM, a clean um, image in this case, uh, before going to your actual configuration. Um, and once you run this script, the SSK suite configuration.sh, it's going to import and install um, several dependencies and packages. Um, and this process can take 15, 20 minutes, um, depending on your environment and your connectivity. Um, so I've already run through these commands to make sure that all these kind of larger operations have completed and are out of the way so that we can continue on to our stated goal of generating the verification um, certificate. So we'll want to grab this command and copy and paste it into our terminal here. And then it's going to ask for our registration code. So I can grab that and paste it. All right, and we have successfully uh, generated our verification certificate with our registration code, and we're ready to move on um, into part two, where we'll continue this walkthrough, um, picking up where we left off and registering that CA with our Cloud Connect instance. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one.